My question today is, what's in your 2022 handbag collection? Hi everyone, it's that time of year again. No, not that time of year. It's PCT, purse collection time, yay! Has anything changed in my collection as a minimalist? Stay tuned to find out. So I've divided my bags into two categories for the purposes of this video. The first category is my heavily used handbags category, aka the never leaving the collection handbags. First up is the Louis Vuitton pochette in the Damier et Ben print. I know, big surprise! If you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you would know that this is my most used favorite bag. It is lightweight, versatile, fits a ton, and is understated. I usually wear this with a crossbody strap I purchased separately, but I also occasionally use it with other straps like the one from my new easy pouch. Louis Vuitton should bring this little gem back into their stores, but that would make it too easy for us, wouldn't it? And LV doesn't always like to make purchases and availability too easy, do they? Anyway, I love this bag and I'm using it most days of the week. The second bag in my collection is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Wait! Please don't X out of this video for showing you two basic bags in a row. But seriously, I like the Neverfull, especially the Damier et Ben print. It's a classic and as far as big bags go, this is my only one, so it holds an essential place in my collection. The third handbag in my collection is the Chanel Wallet on Chain in the black caviar leather and silver hardware. Besides being another hardworking classic, I can never let go of this bag. Not with Chanel raising their prices twice a year, and the price increases, we can only blame one person. That's right, Jenny from Blackpink. Ha, <laughs> I'm joking. But seriously, she is a great brand ambassador for the company, sporting Chanel looks so well formally and casually. She may or may not have influenced me to buy this tweed skirt. Anyway, I like this bag because of the timeless, understated look that can be dressed up or dressed down. Finally, the last handbag in this category is the Prada Reedition 2005 bag. Around the time when I made my last handbag collection video, I had just gotten this bag and didn't know how it felt to really use it. For a while, it became my everyday bag, giving the pochette a run for its money. It's also lightweight, roomy for being small, and fairly carefree. I like it without all the bells and whistles though. You can say I like my Prada bags plain. On to my second category. This is my dainty and pretty handbags collection. I can say this because I am 97% sure my handbags don't have feelings. <laughs> In any case, these bags are less used but still important for certain looks. First up is the Louis Vuitton Epi Easy Pouch in the ivory color. I have a video about all the pros and cons of this bag that you can find on my channel. I like this bag because of its feminine shape, its simple design, and the fresh neutral color. This bag would be perfect if it was just a little bit bigger, but I make do. It can be worn with a leather strap over the shoulder and also crossbody. The little silver strap it came with is a good option too, but currently I'm using that on another handbag, which is number seven on this list. The next bag is the Louis Vuitton Easy Pouch in the black emprunt leather. Why? Because I am the queen of repetitiveness. I got this bag because it's little and it works for those in-between occasions that are not super casual or super formal. The straps are versatile and the little gold one works perfect on the pochette I showed you earlier. I also got this bag to replace the Fendi Fendista bag I sold. They are both similar in terms of them being black with gold hardware. My next bag is the Louis Vuitton Epi Felici in the rose ballerine color. I will forever have a soft spot for the rose ballerine color because it reminds me of ballet slippers which I think might be the point. Here I attach the easy pouch strap to the Felici. It comes with a long crossbody strap but right now I like using it with this short one. I really enjoy how my handbags can share straps. The last bag in this category is the Chanel wallet on chain in the pink iridescent caviar leather. Wait, rewind? Did I just show you this bag? The Queen of Repetitiveness returns with another pair of similar looking bags. They are both small and pink and rectangular, but I promise you there are major differences in the way they feel. 
the Chanel walk is heavier both in the leather and the chain and it gives off more of a statement vibe with its quilting and gold hardware. The fleecy is much more understated. I did actually consider selling this bag, but I took one look at the current prices and the current quality of Chanel and I decided I'd better hold on to this bag for dear handbag life because it would be near impossible to get it again. And finally, I have one last bag in its own category. Number 9 is the Louis Vuitton Favorite MM in the Damier Aven print. I like this bag for its easy flap design and roomy interior and as an alternative to the pochette or when I want to carry just one more extra thing that day. Some of you might remember that I once owned the Favorite and the Zero print. I've always liked this bag but I didn't want to deal with the untreated leather anymore so I got this one. I like this casual versatile bag. As you can tell there are keywords I use for bags frequently like versatile, lightweight, classic, dress up, dress down, feminine. So there you have it, my up to date handbag collection. For those of you who are keeping track, uh, I know no one is really keeping track, but from last year to this year, I think I sold one bag and replaced it with three. Obviously, I can't keep up with that rate and my promise to my reformed minimalist self that I wouldn't go past 10 bags. I'm already feeling very Brady Bunchish with all the bags I have and I am very content with all of them. All of them have a function and gets used and have a special place in my handbag heart. Of course, there can always be room for one more. Please give me a thumbs up if you get the Cousin Oliver reference. Seriously though, I am an advocate of generally less is more. Please check out my other videos for topics like minimalism and wellness. Until next time, I wish you all perfect days. <laughs>